Please. Slides. <laughs> I'm running out of tricks. There we go. Almost. Okay, there I am. Michael Joseph, I work for Yola. Um, I'd just like to get us started with some excuses. I, um, I submitted the abstract for this talk under some false pretenses. Yes, I'm looking at you, Stefano. I was told that they needed a backup speaker, so I submitted my abstract and then somebody dropped out. So that was four days ago. So I apologize in advance if this talk doesn't make sense or has no points and the slides are pretty crappy. This talk is about transformation. So it's, um, it's about how we took a YOLA, for those of you that, that don't know, is a, the tagline is a website that lets you build a website. So I help make a website that lets um, ordinary people drag and drop and what you see is what you get, create and host and publish a website. Um, this is the presentation, if any of you have your devices. So if I look out into the audience and I see you staring at your devices, I'm going to assume that you're following along and not um, Instagramming your Facebooks. Um, there, yeah, so, so we had a, a site building application that lived on, on one box when we started, when we went into beta back in 2007. Um, and this talk is about the story, is the story of how we went from that one box to a tens of machines cluster um, that's elastic and scalable. And we primarily did that using um, a bunch of Python API services uh, to build out the, the functionality and as well give us scalability. Um, my job title at Yola is uh, services team lead, which I think means that I get to lead everybody in prayer every Wednesday. Uh, yeah, so, so th there's a couple of other interesting things that, um, that came out of the story. So I'm putting some pressure on my fellow YOLA colleagues. Uh, here are some other talks that, that could easily have come out of the work that we've done in the last six years. But because I'm the services team lead, I'm mostly going to talk about Python API services. Um, just quickly going through the list that we have there. Yo Deploy and Yo Configurator are our homegrown solutions for deploying our artifacts and maintaining configuration state between the application and the environment that it runs on. We have a really awesome, awesome hosting platform. We serve lots and lots and lots of pages off very little hardware using a combination of black magic and animal sacrifice that I don't fully understand. So that's, a, that's another talk. Um, and we've also, I'm gonna talk a bit about automation in the rest of the talk, but um, that's another thing that we've done really well is anything, being good lazy developers, anything that we had to do twice, we've now scripted and it runs while we sleep. So here's the, here's the outline for the talk. Um, I'm gonna show you a really small picture that no one can see of what, of what the system looked like. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the things we did that allowed us to relatively easily migrate to a services-oriented architecture and, and maybe present some of those patterns that may be reusable for other people in a similar situation. I'm going to talk about, um, about the, the about the way that the development process works in our organization and how that has allowed us to be flexible and, and change the structure of our platform at the same time as delivering value to customers. Um, and then we'll look at the, the medium term road, roadmap for the rest of the platform. Um, it's, a, it's a really small picture, um, but basically it's a two machine setup. So on one machine, we have the site builder, the, the, the Java application that lets you build your sites. It has its database, and on the other machine, we have a WordPress blog and a custom PHP CMS and the publish site. So what we used to do is, in 2007, when, when a customer would publish, we would, we would make a tarball of their site and FTP it across to the publishing cluster where it would get magically served. Um, so it was... It wasn't bad, it, it's still a pretty good application, but that's pretty much all we had in 2007. We had 
we had an idea and we had an application that lived on one box um, and not much else, except some smart people. One of them is um, Neil Blakey Milner, who some of you might know, MBM, uh, on Twitter and in other places. He, he was Yola's first architect, the architect. And he decreed that <laughs> the architecture shall be services oriented, and we made it so. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I make it sound easy. But, but basically, he started with um, a couple of key architecture goals, some, some goals for the architecture that we needed to meet. Um, some of these are, you know, they, they, they seem obvious on the blurry slide in front of you. Um, but yeah, some, some of these come out of the Zen of Python, which, if some of you know, is a, is a Cohen-like thing. Let's, I'm going to do some live um, Googling right now. Let's see if that works. I hope I get my presentation back. OK, yeah, never do demos or work with small children. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, so simple, sim simple is better than complex. Um, we don't like to throw away working code, even if it's ugly, because each of those barnacles that, that we rail against is actually a bug that someone has fixed with some, some code that works. So we don't like to throw away old code. Uh, we love open source, because it's really easy to debug a problem if you can look at the source code, duh. Um, and, and another big problem with this is that we have multiple single points of failure. So if any one of these boxes or pieces of software dies, we're, we're done. We, we maybe rely on backup. So, so these, are the, these are the goals that, um, that we're trying to achieve. Um, these next slides are, um, they're the change log. So, so Neil being a diligent architect and not having much else to do besides PowerPoint and, um, and draw pretty pictures, he maintained from, from November 2007, when, when the first version went up, he, ma he maintained um, a pretty faithful change log of how we, of how we changed the system. So you can see in, in, the, in, the first, in the first little while, we were still primarily concerned with the database. Um, so, so we added some, some scalability and some redundancy. Um, and then in October two, 2008, we decided it would be a good idea if we made some money. So we started selling some domains. It, it's, a, it's a free offering, and it still is. The, the basic offering is free website and hosting. So we thought some money would be nice. So we, we built some systems to uh, process credit cards and to register domains. Um, again, we, a, as we go, we keep adding multiple redundancy and two pairs of failover machines to, to strengthen the, the stability of the system. Um, and now coming up to 2009, which is when Neil left and the pretty pictures and the lovely change logs end, um, we've, got, we've got multiple redundancy. This is another picture that you can't see, but th there's more computers there. Do you see? Look, see, we, we went, we started there, and then we, we added more computers. And now it's better. <laughs> and the reason, the reason that uh, the change logs stopped is because Neil left us for Facebook. And sadly, that's becoming a goddamn theme at YOLA these days. Um, can somebody please tweet to Vata and NBM that I'm at name dropping them, please, so they feel included? Um, yeah, so, so that picture is the end of 2009, which is almost, yeah, it's like four years ago now. Um, so, so from I was lazy and I excused myself. If I had prepared better, uh, the next slide would have been a picture of our current setup, which includes um, about 30 deployable artifacts. So these are installable pieces of Python software that, that live on machines. Um, okay, these are, I'm gonna try and talk through some of the lessons. And, and a lot of these, there's a, there's a lot of kinship with the, the open source ethos of um, releasing early and often. And the, the, the prime advantage of that is that if you, if you release a bunch of small changes, then it's easy to A, roll back if you have to. Although we never roll back, we fix it. So if it's a small change, then the surface area of your bug is small. And you have lots of small people looking at all the bugs. So it, 
it increases your velocity. And, and if you can, if you're confident in pushing out a small piece of code and your systems are reliable and automated enough, then that's a really, it's a really liberating thing as a developer. I mean, we're not, we're not GitHub. We don't deploy 50 times a day, but, but we deploy when we need to. When something is done, we can deploy it in one or two easy steps, and that, and that, and that keeps morale up, because if you've ever worked on a six-month debt march project, by the time you launch, you find you don't really care anymore. And you need a you need a break now. Um, so another lesson that we learned is um, is standardization. So so we have over over the course of the six years that the template has evolved. So when I started, the the current state of the art for a Python API server um, is a thing called Piston, Django Piston, um, and that was the bee's knees. It did. It got rest in your hate OAS, and it serialized and was all singing and wonderful, but that was six years ago. So unfortunately, we still have some of that six-year-old Python piston code. Um, but, but yeah, so, so the template, so we, we, defied, we divide our, our applications into, into two things. We have, we have applications and installables. So an application is anything that has a front end that that displays something to a user on the web. So, so the site builder, sure, the, the checkout service where we process credit cards needs to serve you a form securely so that you can give us money. Um, so those things are applications, and they're, they're primarily Django, um, apart from the site builder, which is, which is Java. Um, and then the, the <coughs> other thing that we've done is we've, so, so all these API services live out there, and it can get, somewhat confusing deciding which service you're talking to and what call you're making and what the parameters of that API call are. Um, so together with, together with the API servers, we also build and ship a standardized set of Python service clients. Um, we, we build on top of the lovely um, requests module by Kenneth Wright, and Yola's open sourced a module called Demands which is our, you know, the, there's, there's two requirements for a project, um, for an open source project. It's, it's got to be useful and it's got to have a clever name. So, so demands, if you don't get a successful response back from your HTTP call, demands will raise an exception because it demands a successful response, right, <laughs> guys? Um, yeah, so we have, we have a set of standard um, service clients which make it easy for people to programmatically in their applications introspect and discover the methods um, that the API servers use. So again, that's a screenshot of, um, of a piece of code. Um, this, is, this is one of our service clients. Um, and we use, we use Sphinx um, to generate some documentation. So with, with a bit of markup, in the, in, the, in the definition, in the code of the service client call, we can, we can document um, we can document the parameters it takes, the expected responses, the types of the arguments. Um, and here is, and that's kind of what the generated documentation looks like from that piece of source code. So this is all automated. We have, um, we have a bunch of Jenkins jobs that are constantly, constantly building the latest version of our, of our service clients and, and drinking water and making us coffee and generating the, the Sphinx docs and uploading them to a, to a server where all the developers can share them. Whew, I'm getting tired, man. I've been talking for a while now. Um, okay, so let's talk, about, let's talk about the organization. So again, there's some, we've learned some lessons from, from open source. Um, hiring is really important in an organization. You want to ideally be working with people that are smarter than you. Um, we, um, we like to think we have a meritocracy. And this is the point where, where I'm going to plug my company. Yes, we are hiring like everyone else. So before you get out there in the break and the recruitment managers start circling, you remember you heard Daniel and I first. Um, 
Yeah, so, so we have a meritocracy. There's, there's a really flat engineering structure. We have a VP of engineering, Lisa, um, who oversees all things and is, is our BDFL, which is a benevolent dictator for life. So, so, so usually there's a debate, and we hope the best ideas win, but if, if people have personalities, as they do from time to time, uh, then Lisa is the tiebreaker, um, which works really well. We started off um, using Subversion. Uh, we've recently migrated most of our code to GitHub, and pull requests have changed our life. They, it's, it's the most awesome thing ever. So I get to, in my inbox, I get to see every change that happens, and I can decide if I care about it or not. Um, and the tools are pretty nice to, to increase the quality of your code, and, and back to the the principle of, of releasing small bits of code, you, you, have the, you have the confidence in knowing that the rest of the team has at least glanced over your code and hopefully saved you from some embarrassing mistakes. And in the unlikely event that there are bugs in your codes, not, not your code, other, other people's code, then at least you have someone to blame. You know, who reviewed this? Um, yeah, and, that, and that's, that's another that's another principle of open source. Maybe Eric Raymond coined it with, oh no, it was Torvalds who said that um, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. So that, that works pretty well. Um, here are some open source URLs. So demands is our, um, our request service client and there's, there's, a, bun there's a, bunch of other, a bunch of other little modules that we've released. So, um, that's, that, that brings us to the roadmap. Um, so we're not, we're not there yet. We still have, we have a bunch of legacy applications, unfortunately, as you, as you, as you pull, as you bootstrap and refactor and improve and update your application to the, the, the latest best practice, the latest current thinking, um, so, some services get left behind. So, so we still have some code that lives in SVN. We still have some, some applications that depend on our old bash-based deploy system. We still have Python code that, um, that uses Piston and is not great. So, so we have all these tasks and, and we're continually, the, the rule is if you, have to, if you have to touch a piece of code, then it's your responsibility to um, to make the, the surroundings better. So you, you poke around and you do some PEP 8 formatting for the white space OCD people like me, and you, you, know, you write some doc strings and you make the code a better place, and, and that's really an organic way that you can improve your code base without having a, you know, a six month refactor to read doc string all your whatevers. Um, so, so apart from bringing everything up to scratch, um, there are some, some other things that we'd like to start using. One of those is uh, database succession. Um, our database applications are reasonably well behaved. We use South for, for database migrations, uh, which, al which allows us to store as, as code, really, express our database migrations as code, and have those run automatically on deploy so that we synchronize our, our it automatically synchronizes our database. Um, and that works pretty well, but there are some there are some cases where you want to do something to the database that's going to lock the whole thing, which means downtime, which we don't want. So, so there's a there's a concept called database succession, which I think Martin Fowler coined, and basically the idea is is that you you do it in pieces. So it's similar to um, this thing that I didn't really talk about very much. Which is how, which is a, a rollout pattern. So, you want to add some new functionality. Okay, let's. We, we needed to add a user service. So we needed a central repository of users and user information. So, we create a new Python um, API service called the user service, and we release that. It's it's not serving any traffic, but we validated that the application is sane enough to be deployed onto a production machine 
and we can curl it and see that it's okay. So, that, so that's out there and safe. Then, then an application chooses to now use the user service and they use our, our awesome service client library, which is well documented and they see the methods they need to use and they release their code. Um, you know, they can test against production if they want to or all the other environments that we have. Um, and once that code goes out, it works with the new service. And, and then you, you find the code that wasn't using that and you clean it up and then you rinse, repeat, and iterate. So it's that, that process of, um, of, of moving things in small steps. So if you want to create a new table, you, you create the new table first before your application knows anything about it. The table is there waiting. Then you write your application to, to work with that new table and then you deploy it. Database succession is, if we take the example, so we have, a, we have our user service which has a user table and there's a couple of fields in there that we want to generalize and pull out as preferences. So we have, we store the user's location and their country say, but now we want to create we want to create a, users, a user preferences mapping table. So we want, we want to store any preferences. But that's, that's not an easy database change to make in one go non-destructively. So, so the succession approach is you, you create the new user preferences table, then any time, and then you employ, you employ lazy migration. So any time you want to read that user record, you, you read from the old schema, and you write to the new schema, and then you mark that record as migrated. And so on demand, every time a user, every, any time user information is requested, your code lazily migrates you to the new schema, and the next time you ask for that user, it sees that that row is migrated and serves you from the new schema. And so eventually, your database and your code and your new schema coalesce and merge. Um, so, so that's a thing that we'd like to do. Another thing is feature flags where, yeah, we, we've <coughs> recently felt the need to better segment users. So we want to we wanna show people from California that have a preference of buying in Canadian dollars a certain advert. So we need to segment users. So um, a nice tool for that is feature flags where you can, you can wrap, you can, you can put a condition around your code that says, if this user meets these criteria, then show them this functionality, otherwise don't. Um, and the, a nice byproduct of that is that it allows you to dog food your own product, um, which we sadly, I think, the engineers at Yola don't dog food our product as much as we should. You know, we don't actually build sites with our tool, we just fix it so you can. Um, but but if, you can, if you can segment users, then it makes it really easy to dog food so that when I log into Yola.com, it knows that I'm me and I'm an employee, so it shows me all the bleeding edge, latest UI stuff using feature flags. Um, another thing we need to do better is monitoring. We, we have those awesome open source tools in our stack, Graphite, Munin, and Sentry, and yeah, we mainly just shove data into there. We don't, we don't look at it too often, unless something's on fire, like my mic. Mm. And because we have a relatively small cluster, like we don't have hundreds of machines, we have tens of machines, those tools are good enough to, to find the problem and fix it. But um, the next juicy ops, DevOps project is gonna be building us a nice dashboard so we can look at the things we care about and, and see if there's problems. So, so that's next. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a long six years. You know, I'm, I'm, when I look back at the slides, I'm, I'm impressed and I'm proud of what we've done, but when you're in the trenches fixing bugs and you know, trying, to get out, trying to get out code for a deadline because We've got a partner in Brazil that is demoing our project, our, our product on national television, and our VP of something is on the stage, and all the things are crashing. Yeah, it's um, it's it's tough to get the big picture. So we're, but what what's exciting is that we're we're almost there. We're we're at the singularity. We've got a couple more apps that need to be modernized, but but we're really close to having this all singing, all dancing platform. So. I think this is um, another appropriate place to insert that we're hiring. If, if any of that sounded interesting, um, you can come help us make YOLA 
awesomer. Um, and yeah, that's it. I think. Am I massively under time? Uh, we have 15 minutes for questions. Whew. Okay, you can clap now. We're done. Thank you. First person to ask a question, I'll do a card trick. <laughs> Go with me. How many users do you have? We have millions, six, seven, eight, eight millions of users. Well, people that have signed up. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Facebook, guys. <laughs> Jareth, I've seen those, those, those paragraphs of comments that usually ends with poetry and some reference to dragons. It's still there. It's, they're still there. <laughs> yeah, actually, that was the, the thundering, what's it called? Stampeding herds? Thundering, what do you call it? When you run out of, when everything, thundering herds. When everything, when everything wants the thing and they all, yeah, so that was the, that was the, exactly. So every time we, we had the, we had our lovely SOA, every time we deployed something, a cache got cleared and a timeout setting was wrong. So everything asked, everybody asked everything, asked everything for everything and crashed everything. Next question. Uh, you talked about database succession. Yes. What database do you use? We run MySQL. That I'm not, easy it's it's not a fancy. Thing. Well, well, you have to, you have to write code. It's not. I don't think it comes with MySQL. Yeah, no, you write. Yeah, I want to write something open source on top of South that that uses normal South migrations and then. Yeah, and then lets you define a model in code. So you have you have your old model and your new model, and then it's smart enough to know whether a row is migrated and then transparently. It sounds nice. Yes. Sure. So I mean to distinguish it does spit out HTML, so it could spit out HTML five and still be a Java application. Yeah, I was thinking but that. but but really the reason is because it still works and it's a lot of code and rewrites never work. No, no, yeah. So it's like a, it's a Gmail-like single-page JavaScript application that lets you drag and drop, and it's also got a, a Java backend of APIs. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we're talking about dead. Are you talking about database succession? Yeah. Well, that's that's not a that's vaporware. I just I may, like that's how I'd like it to be. There isn't any code that does it now. We don't we don't do that now. That's roadmap. Yeah, no, I'm I'm working on it. Just yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, no, we we delete it. You clean up. Yeah, that's the last step. Yeah. Uh, question. Yes. Do you use any agile practices? And if yes, which ones? Um, agile. We we try not to be too buzzwordy. We we did try out sprints. I think that's still a thing. But but usually I think what what happens if you have if you have if you have you need three things. You need you need smart people. You need a a kind of hazy priority order, and you need a good issue tracking system. And if you have those things, the the high priority things rise and smart people fix them, and when they're fixed, we release it. So we don't, like we tried it, but it didn't really fit. It seemed, enough. It seemed artificial to have scrum meets, and like we do stand up, but it's just typing things. So. Yes, Mike. Did you talk about how you use your command library and what that should look like here? Um, how we use it is, is it standardized, right? So, so all our service clients, all the new ones are demand based. And it gives us, it builds, it's only a thin layer on top of request. Um, 
it's mostly requests. So, so we build on top of requests and we add exception handling basically so that if I, if I make a call and I get a 500, then I can catch it. I don't need to introspect the response. I think that's, yeah. Right, yes, you can, yes, we can, we, we model, we have models in the service client as well, so there's a, there's a user model that has the attributes and, and then functions that translate into service calls, into API calls, so it encapsulates it that way as well. Yes? How big a team do you currently have? How big a team? Help me out, guys. We engineers, just, or the whole company? Um, 20. Between here and San Francisco, yeah. And Ukraine. And Ukraine. <laughs> Sorry, Vladimir. <laughs> Our famous Ukrainian. Yes. Don't be sorry. Yes. I believe the new hotness, I'm hearing that the new hotness is Django REST framework. EJRF, you heard it here first or second. You heard it here. Yeah, uh, the nice thing about DJRF is you get browsable API documentation for free. It's, it's very good. Yes. You mentioned something about elastic scaling. Can we get frozen Yeah, no, well, like in theory, no. We, we, it's, not, it's not that big. If we run out of space, then somebody pushes a button and brings another one up. It's not, it's not elastic based on load or anything like that. Not that fancy. But we can we can make more and then <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Who is biggest fan in that because it takes over the market kind of issue? Well you understand it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's all black magic to me. I'm good to go. Any more questions? So I really do have cards. I think we have ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. You can speak amongst yourselves. I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Thank you, guys. It was a very informative talk. Now we know where to go work if we want to go work for Facebook. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Yes, we, we are a stepping stone. We'll have you anyway. Just give us a year and a half, and you can go to Facebook. <laughs>